Hello, good evening and welcome back. It's been a while. It's in the know, brought to you by the Racing Post and Coral. And we've had a few weeks off to rest and recuperate in time for the second half of the season. But it'd be rude not to come back uh, for, uh, quite frankly, uh, an unbelievable lineup in the King George tomorrow at Ascot. Uh, and uh, given we're a, a sport who can be a little bit prone to uh, overhyping a contest, uh, finally we have a race uh, that deserves all the headlines uh, and the uh, uh, the bigging up that it's had all week. And apart from, uh, of course, Desert Crown, pretty much uh, every horse we wanted to turn up is going to be turning up tomorrow at, uh, at Ascot. So. Uh, we've uh, got a fantastic feature race to get stuck into. Uh, we do, of course, uh, also have soft ground uh, and big fields in the uh, majority of the Rascot uh, uh, races, though. Uh, and uh, I think quite a few of us are still licking our wounds from Royal Ascot. So uh, a, a big Saturday uh, back at that track uh, could be a, a good thing for some. Uh, or it could be bringing back painful memories uh, for others. But like I said, uh, the feature race could be won by five, six, seven uh, of those uh, those runners, uh, but it is the classic generation that dominates the betting. We'll be getting to that very shortly indeed, uh, and of course we'll hopefully pick out some value uh, in uh, the, the handicaps uh, and the two-year-old races. And in particular, like I said, the international hasn't disappointed uh, with that uh, lineup. Uh, another big seven furlong ha handicap at Ascot to get stuck into. Uh, we're live and interactive as ever, so get in touch on the chat box. A few of you already have, uh, and a few of you uh, excited, a few of you in no way excited. But uh, that's pretty much the balance in the chat box. Uh, we have the enthusiasts and we have the curmudgeons. Uh, and that's not only in the chat box, of course, uh, it's also on the panel. Uh, Paul uh, Keeley in the studio tonight as well. Uh, how are you feeling? Are you on the enthusiast or the curmudgeon side tonight? Uh, I'm, always, I'm always fairly enthusiastic. I don't know why, because I keep getting knocked and knocked and knocked. Yeah. But, uh, You're the yeah, chum yeah, I'm always fairly, of racing yeah. tipsters. Yeah, exactly. Stay positive and something will happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, finally, we've got an actual feature race that that deserves its um, deserves its its, 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 its prize and its... Yeah, Which absolutely. Well, Saturday. in terms of numbers, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it is a really, really good race. It's a really competitive mm -hmm. race because there isn't a superstar in it. You, you, not yet, you anyway. Could say, you, you could say not yet, as far as the three-year-olds are concerned, but there, yeah. are, you know, there are no absolute superstars in it. But they're all horses in the low, rated in the low one twenties. Loads of them with a chance. Yeah, you could, it's quite easy to make a case for all of them. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, again, the soft ground's going to. Uh, come into it as well. Obviously, that round track draw is going to come into it as well because it's you know you're not many you don't have many eleven runner King Georges, do you? So there's oh, not exactly. many that have actually exactly. yeah. uh, uh, that's uh, actually come into it. Um, but the international, of course, has plenty of Keel's system qualifiers. Uh, yeah, too many of them. I'm not sure I could be able to claim one really if it mm -hmm. wins. To be honest, is that there's that many? But yeah, it's my sort of race, isn't it? I saw the other day that Ross Golan nearly won at Beverly of all places. Yeah, I've given up on him, so I'm surprised he didn't win. I've yeah, yeah. officially binned him. Go through the card next time, I imagine. But, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Paul Keeley then on the enthusiast side. Uh, do we have to guess which side Tom Siegel's on? No, it depends which one. Yes, we do. I love it. <laughs> Here he is. I there we go. Uh, do you uh, do you love tomorrow's King George, Tom? What do you think uh, in terms of the the lineup? Yeah. Is it as good as everyone's saying? Yeah. How can you not be? I mean, um, listen. I don't as the two three. I've got. Last two Derby winners, uh, well, you've got the last, first and second of the Derby, you've got the second best horse in last year's Derby, we nearly had last year's Derby winner, we've got the last three Coronation Cup winners, we've got Luxembourg, we've got, you know, I don't, it's not, Bar Desert Crown, there's not a horse missing that from Britain and Ireland that I think should be running in it, so I think it's a great race, it reminds me of going back to my youth when I was watching proper King George, when the King George was the race in the late last um, 70s, 80s and 90s of last millennium. I, they, they were just brilliant races. That was the best race of the year, every year. And uh, so hopefully this will be the same. I think that, yeah, I think it's a fantastic race. I hope the ground isn't too bad. Mm. I didn't think it was that bad today. I thought it was verging on getting towards to pitches off by the end of the end of the day. And hopefully if they don't have any more rain, I don't, it's, it's rubbish. It's, this, it's a heavy ground horse you win. I hate that. This is, this is a proper race, and you want the best horses to win. You don't want it to be won by conditions rather than ability. And so hopefully it won't be too bad, and therefore we'll have a cracking race. Really looking forward to it. Can't wait. Well, to be fair, Anton, you, I mean, you, you think that, were you? What's that? You weren't expecting that, were you? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I was expecting what, the opposite of what I said, pretty much. Whatever I uh, teed you up to be, <laughs> I, I was expecting the opposite. But like you said about the conditions, uh, Tom, but... Is there a single one of the fancied runners that won't actually 
uh, appreciate softer going anyway. Obviously, it gets really heavy, then it's a little bit different at Ascot, but they've all got soft ground form. Yeah, I just I think I think I think classy horses tend to win on any ground. So, mm. but I think in terms of where they're where they're where they're best on, I think all of them would prefer better ground. I think all flat horses prefer better ground apart from Hamish, who I hope doesn't win because that'll spoil it for everyone. Yes, yes, it might. That'd be a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a surprise, that's for sure. Uh, yeah. Simon Clare, uh, firmly uh, the flag bearer for the the enthusiast side of the uh, the panel, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, what a what an absolute corker we've got in in prospect, Simon. Yeah, that's no, a brilliant race. It's a race, like Tom said. I look back on. I think uh, you know some, some of the great King George of the nine or the nineties. My first King George when I joined Coral in ninety seven was was probably. One of the best when Helitio, the art winner, took on the likes of Phil Sudski and Slingsfield, uh, and Swain won that race that day. The 16 to 1 chance, and then came back and won the next year, one of the leading older horses. And that was a sort of great, a great uh, King George. But there have been a few. I thought they enabled beating Ulysses the other year. I thought it was a solid King George. And um, looking back, I remember Galileo being fantastic like that. And then, and then of course, they, they met again in the Irish Championship, and fantastic like got his revenge. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a great race. and. It's a really good one tomorrow, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'll be in 20 years. I'll be saying the same. I'll be sat in this studio, still <laughs> presenting this show, going, "Oh, remember when August rode out and won the King George?" Uh, and I can finally join in with the with the reminiscing that you lot get up to. Uh, well, you're not that young, surely? How old are you? 22. Uh, I'm th- I'm 38. So. Uh, I'll- <laughs> I mean that's a fair. I mean there's a there's a little it's bit a of a fair gap. Old gap isn't it? Yeah. There's a bit of a generational. Yeah. Gap. All right, all right, okay. There is a little bit of a gap. Yeah. So it's, when they say when they say trying to attract a younger generation to racing, it's uh, a younger generation when it comes ra- in, into racing terms. It's mid thirties, I think. So, uh, yeah, but uh, what's your favourite King George memory uh, kills? I remember Reference Point winning. I did. I was a massive fan of Reference Point, and then there you go. That's yeah, that's late eighties, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. Late eighties. Yes. Like I said, when I was. Uh, uh, really getting into uh, kicking a football about on the backyard, I imagine. <laughs> but um, uh, get, in, get in touch on the chat uh, if you uh, if you got like anything about uh, the the card t- tomorrow uh, at Jabok Twenty Three. Uh, thank you. Uh, why is Pancho Villa presenting? He says good evening uh, to you. Good evening to Tom Leach as well. Chris Reed, Off World, Toothpick Charlie, uh, and plenty more. We'll get stuck into Ascot uh, in just a second. But first, this. There you go, get involved on the uh, uh, Members Club here at the Racing Post uh, and you'll get uh, pretty much all the, uh, the information you need for tomorrow's Ascot card and we're going to start off uh, in the, uh, the opener at Ascot uh, with uh, a load of non-runners. Apparently, <laughs> according to that screen. Oh, you've had all day to, pick for, to get that one up. It's been like that since we came and sat in the studio. Yeah, Come you on, know what? I was going to say, you know what? A, a two year old maiden with barely any form to go on is pretty tough, but that's made it a hell of a lot easier. Uh, so uh, it's a buy through to the next round, that's for sure. Uh, well, do you want me to read them out? Oh, yeah, there, 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 we well, there we go. Oh, what a what a reveal! Kodiak Thriller eleven to four. Appalant uh, is uh, eleven to two. Fire Demon seven to one. Uh, Al is fifteen to two. Uh, with Northview, Welcome Dream eight to one. Indian Run eight to one. Kingdom of Riches uh, eight to one. Uh, and bigger prices the rest. Kodiak Thriller then was a, a bit of an eye catcher at uh, at Windsor last time out, albeit uh, in what looked a, a fairly uh, modest race. But there's twenty seven grand. On the table for this uh, uh, Kiel's, and it is very rarely a modest race, and there's a lot of nice newcomers. Yeah, yeah, there's plenty of nice newcomers. I mean, you know, the, 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 the horses that have shown some, I think there's, there's, there's something like four horses have all got the identical RPR. Mm. Uh, you know, and, and it's, like, you know, it's only in the 70s, right? you know what I mean? So we're not talking brilliant. Uh, and, you know, it, it, the surprise. Now, I, I, I always wondered how bookmakers come up with their tissues for races involving unraised horses. You know, because if I'm, in, you, know, you know, I don't, I, I don't subscribe to any sort of tissue. So if I, if I, if I was producing a tissue myself, first thing I would look at it is to say, well, the Hannon Yard has won this seven times in the last ten years, and he's got a complete outsider. Yeah. Uh, time bar, 
Uh, it, yeah, that, yeah, their yard has actually won this race more times in the last 10 years than Luke Dace has had two year winners in his entire career. And he's got, <laughs> he's got the four favour. No, nothing against Luke Dace, he doesn't get the opportunities and the horse has actually got a chance. One of the ones with the best full man, I think the best top speed figure. Yep. So, you know, but if I was looking at that race, well, I think, well, I want to keep the hand on side. But he's a, you know, he started off at 16 to 1 and he went out to 20s. So I don't know. He was the first one I looked at. Um, uh, I think. You know, it's, it's a complete guess, obviously, but uh, the yard had the second in the race last year at 12 to 1. They didn't, they didn't have the winner for the first time in a while. Uh, and the other one I liked of the ones that ran was actually a pellant uh, yeah. of Charlie Fellows. He was the only horse with no experience when he raced at air last time, and having been a bit keen early, he, he just just took his while to get the message, didn't he? But um, it's, not a, um, it's not a track for. Uh, it's not a last to first two year old first time. Not man, really, kind of track, no. Is it? No, no, so. no. But it just took a while for the penny to drop as well, didn't it? So I thought. Uh, I thought that was okay. So, don't, you know, it, it, it's a guess. He's got a Jim Crack entry. Yeah. You know, it's probably uh, a little bit ambitious, but you never know. We've had horses running there. I'm sure we've had horses running the Jim Crack that are, that are running this. So, uh, we'll have to wait and see. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a guess up, isn't it, the maiden race? Yeah, okay then. Uh, Avalanche is a, an 11 to 2 shot. Uh, for for this and yeah, I mean, air doesn't necessarily suit those tactics. I mean, it obviously was down to greenness anyway. But Charlie Fellows, Jamie Spencer, uh, coming from the back at Ascot certainly does on the the straight track. Uh, Tom's of Appalachian certainly got a, a chance. But um, are you? Do you think the form's good enough to, uh, to 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 get the winner from one of the ones who's already seen the track, or is there a nice pedigree that stands out? Uh, just, it's, it's, I, I don't think there's that's outstanding pedigree. I really don't in there. Thought maybe the best one was Peter Chapel Himes horse, the expert eye horse, but I didn't think it was a. Don't think I don't really think the top trainers like running their best two year olds at Ascot anymore, apart from at the Royal Meeting. They tend not to run them there for their debuts, the the, uh, the Gosdens of this world. Uh, so I don't think it's a great race at all. I think Appellant might be the one. He's by he's from the family of Penitent, who he also remember. He likes soft ground, so I wondered whether. He, he might be all right under the conditions. Uh, it's not a race I have any great view on at all. Uh, appellant will do for me, but uh, I will not be having a bet in it, that's for sure. Okay. Well, appellant at Keels, I remember. That's my era now. I can go back 10 or 11 years. <laughs> really liked, I think he liked the ground so much. I remember someone saying that uh, I think when he won the, the Group 2 mile race at Sandown, it's one of the slowest mile furlongs ever on the flat, like, you know, because it, it was absolutely bottomless. So, yeah, he went through it all right. Yeah, he certainly did. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, a tough little opener. We talked a lot about this race, uh, Simon. But do you have any uh, any angles or any hour long uh, prize boost? Anything we should get in now before we get stuck into the rest of the card? Yeah, no prize boost, but only. I mean, I'm for echoing Paul. I had a look at this and I, I went straight to the uh, past winners. I always like to look at past winners just to see any trends. And and I and that that you know, Richard Hannon has trained the winner of this six times in eight years. He was second last year, and he didn't have a runner in the other year. He didn't train the winner. So I mean, is and it's not one of those things I then checked, did he have two or three runners in some of those races, the way he might in sales races? And all bar one of those years, he only had one runner and the other he had two. So that, that time bar is a home bread. So it's not, it's, it's like not, it's not sort of flashily bread. It didn't cost any money at the sales. But the, the dams had several horses have come out and won race. So she's fairly, you know, the breeders have a nice there. I think she's just, just on her stats alone, you've talked about the fact that no, it doesn't look like any at this stage standout two year old. Why wouldn't you chuck you with a time bar? And um, uh, Jim Crowley rides Al Jazeera, his neighbour Luke Dace, who trains near where he lives. Uh, does, he doesn't have a huge amount of the, about the horse, but he's hoped for the good run. And Hugo Palmer, our coral racing club trainer in his blog today, uh, says he's got games, a very nice horse, been working with good horses. It's just the fact that you know, Hugo's horses don't tend to win, or two year olds don't tend to win first time out. So he's hoping for a good run. No, genuinely a really good run with the, the nice future uh, but he hopes he gets beat by Kodiak Villa because apparently Hugo Palmer bred Kodiak Villa as the man got any more talents but anyway there we go so I'm going for time bar purely on that train of spot. Okay, there you go. Uh, well, that, uh, that's kind of cleared up, I guess. Um, we're trying to be sneaking through the play spot, I think, tomorrow, and that's uh, in this race, but I don't think we'll be getting exactly, too Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, the, the North View that Tom mentioned, that was 25 early. Uh, on the very yeah. first show, and it's now eight. And Peter Chappellheim had one smashed off the boards yesterday. They did. Uh, off a break of nearly two years that won pretty easily at Sandown. So. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that's the only one. That's, that's the only newcomer with a, with a group entry. It's entered in the gym crack, that one, nothing other. Yeah, okay, there you go. Lovely stuff. Right, I, I honestly didn't think we were going to 
a sandwich death into that race. I genuinely, I genuinely enjoyed it. We've done our work. We've we, done our work. We have done our work in the first race anyway. You might have got bored by the 450. I don't know. We'll soon find out. Uh, but the, uh, the Princess Margaret stakes up next. Uh, more two-year-old action here uh, with Symbology. Uh, at the uh, top of the betting, three to one. Soprano, one hundred and thirty. Pretty Crystal is seven to two. Comat, nine to one. Luna Shine, nine to one. Dazzling Star, nine to one. Sacred Angel, twelves. Eleanor Dashwood is sixteen to one. Gladly Ever After, uh, uh, La Guarida and Cry Fiction uh, make up the the field in this race, uh, and uh, we've got plenty of horses who've shown. Uh, incredible promise in novice events, or like Pretty Crystal uh, and Soprano, run really, really well uh, in uh, in black type races already this season. Uh, uh, Tom, um, I tend to with two year old races like this, ignore the group runs almost and just concentrate solely on whatever they did in their novice, regardless of whether they won in a group race, because I, I do think that's where you shoot really get a, an idea of a horse's ability. And I started to go through this field, uh, and I thought Symbology, Soprano, Pretty Crystal, Coman. I mean, you even get down to it and. Like I said, gladly ever after. Even La Guarida was a, an RPR of 88 when winning at Goodwood. This looks a good race. Well, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure it's a good race. It's an race. open race anyway, put it that way. I think it's a very tight race, like you say. I think it's going to be really, really competitive. Make cases for lows. The question for punters now is, is Soprano going to run? Because mm. she only mm. ran on Thursday, didn't she, at, in Sandown in the Star Stakes over seven. Is she going to bounce back? You know, I know Jules probably had a, had a great, and had a, Real high opinion of her. Is she going to run a two days back off the back? It might do. It's a, it's a royal ascot. It's a high thoroughbred, so might want to be there for, for King George Day. Uh, she's got the best form, I think, Soprano, on her second, on her third in the Albany. But once again, I don't think the. I'm not sure that's that high a standard. I think the winner's pretty good, but I'm not sure. Pretty Crystal, obviously, is right in there too. She was on the other side of the track. I came down on uh, one of the ones that had just won once, and at the price, I, I, I sided with Luna Shine, uh, who's trained by James Horton, uh, but very expensive, cost 300 grand as a yearling. She's a half for our half sister to Faylat or something. The, the, the group one with Owen Burry was trained anyway. Likes. So, and I just was really impressed with the way she finished off her race at first. She came from sort of last, hit the line really strongly. She was very well backed. She was like, 10 to 1 into 9 to 2 that day. So they obviously know they've got something pretty good there. Uh, I'm, I think the train is underrated. I think if, if Luna Shine was trained by a Goldston or a Haggis, uh, she'd be half the price she's uh, uh, currently. So she was my one. I just I just, I just, just went through the videos of all the runs and I thought, I'm mm. most impressed with her. I just thought she hit the line pretty hard just by Kodiak. Very good record in two-year-old races at Ascot. Uh, so she was, she was the one for me, Luna Shine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, Thirst, definitely not a track you want to be making up a lot of ground on that straight track, is it? And she absolutely rattled home. Uh, I remember watching the race line and thinking, where the, where the hell has this come from? And the, uh, the second one earlier on at the, the same track early, uh, earlier today, admittedly in uh, nursery company. Uh, but yeah, um, from the family of Anne Mart, uh, of course, who was, uh, was uh, a late withdrawal from the Coral Eclipse earlier on this month. Uh, but yeah, wide open stuff here, Keels. Uh, yeah, it is wide open again, isn't it? Um, yeah, I don't see any reason why Soprano won't run. It's only two days, isn't it? Two days, isn't it? it hasn't exactly been you know, gone in three mile hurdle, has she? You know what I mean? It's a, it's a seven furlong race at Sandown. She did finish tired, mind you, because it was soft ground. Um, but, you know, the one I came down on before I even saw the prices was Symbology. I quite like the way she won at, uh, won at York. Um, Trainer says doesn't want any more rain. Um, it's, it's, it's been, we're I'm and ahhing over what they're going to get again, aren't we? Because it's you know it's, it's showers are forecast. We don't know how heavy they're going to be or whether they're going to hit at all. Again, that's uh, I mean, it's pretty much every Saturday meeting every, now. Well, isn't it? It was, uh, Ascot, Ascot specifically because it, it dries so quick and it gets sticky so quickly as well. The other way, you yeah. know. So, so uh, we'll we'll have to wait and see of that. Will I back at three one? Probably not. I get where Tom's coming from. Luna Shine again. It's not a race that I was massively interested in, in betting with, but. Uh, it would be symbology for me. Okay, symbology is currently a, a three to one uh, shot. So I don't often get a, a Charlie Appleby two year old with uh, an impressive win uh, last time out coming into a race of this nature at nine to one either. So Dazzling Star is very interesting. Uh, Pretty Crystal was a little bit eye catching at Ascot. And was a challenging Persian Dreamer in that, uh, that Albany uh, Simon. A Persian Dreamer, of course, came out and won in group company at the, the July Festival, so loads of interesting form lines coming head-to-head -head here. Yeah, and it's, it is a tricky race, as you say. We don't know that Soprano 
is going to run. I mean, the market's taken a very interesting shift in the last half an hour. We're still currently three to one symbology. We can get 11 to two, five to one, nine to two. And so, I mean, we'll probably follow in that direction any, you know, imminently. Um, money seems to be coming pretty crystal, very solid, but Comat looks the best back by far. It's 12 to one earlier today. It's now seven to one, 30 to two in the place with nine to one. I suppose if you look back, it was just behind pretty crystal and soprano at Royal Ascot. On good to firm ground, but then the previous two runs were, I've heard previous two runs were uh, a Vichy listed race number five where she was a running on third and she broke her maiden first time out of red car on soft ground. So maybe the fact that they've cut in the ground tomorrow, Alaska, there's an anticipation that's going to suit her and she she looks to be the best backed at the moment in the market. But uh, yeah, it, it's sort of, it is a fascinating race to try and make sense of, of given their relatively high spoke also. Yeah, okay. So um, yeah, like I said, it is a little bit interesting, especially because. We don't know if Soprano is going to run. Um, soft ground should suit though. Likes to get a toe in, high knee action, toe knee, Soprano. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's actually one of your best. That is one of your best. Toe oh. knee Soprano. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I think I'm. Uh, I think I've hit rock bottom, but uh, never mind. Never mind. Uh, she's uh, she's got a chance if she runs keels. What's the selection? She's got chances, man. Uh, token se selection would be symbology. Symbology, it is then. Uh, Tom, a lunar shine for me. Lunar Ross shine, it is. There we go, Simon. Yeah, listen, I'm never afraid of a drift. I do like symbology. It was very green, jumped to path, and the best her, you know, her best bottom of the last there uh, when she won. So I think she she looks a, a good bet tomorrow. Okay, there you go then. Moving on then for uh, at Phillies and Mares uh, over the uh, the round mile at uh, at Ascot tomorrow uh, for this uh, this Group Three contest and the uh, the most uh, Ascotty horse to have ever Ascotted. Uh, it's Random Harvest who absolutely loves this track, straight track, uh, round track. It doesn't matter. She runs an absolute blind every time uh, she comes uh, here, and she's eleven to four favourite, uh, understandably for this uh, race. Uh, on the other car tomorrow. Fascinating rival though in the shape of uh, Amina who hasn't been seen since uh, last year's uh, Guineas. Uh, uh, Caro Bell is 7-2, Thornbrook 11-2, Roman Mist 7-1, Vetiver uh, does not go. Uh, so there's a jump out uh, to uh, Zenga at 12-1 and 20-1 and bigger the rest. But uh, yeah, we every time there's an Ascot card, whether it's a Royal Ascot card or uh, the Shergar Cup or uh, Champions Day, whatever you want to uh, talk about. We always start with Ascot form, uh, and uh, Ed Walker's uh, mare absolutely lo loves the course. Yarder in form, and Safi Osborne's yeah. running out of her skin as well. Yeah, it didn't run great last time at Newmarket. But it doesn't matter, does it? Because no. it just, she just, you know, every time she's run at Ascot, she's run really, really well. It annoyed me really because she was eight to one anyway when the first market came, and I thought that was big. I never backed her because I'd managed to talk myself in the back into something that hasn't turned up, mm. uh, which is uh, you know rather annoying. But yes, I, you know, my problem with this is I pretty much agree with the entire market. Um, yeah. yeah, okay, I don't know really too much about Amena, but obviously you'd have to be worried about her. Uh, she's she's run very little, but you know she's she looks full of promise. And I thought I thought of, of the three row, Caddo Bell was very interesting. Johnny Murta bringing her bringing her over her, um, one going away last time. Obviously does need to step up. There's been plenty of money for her as well. Um, so they would, you know, they would have been the three that I'd have been most interested in the first three in a betting. So another one I'm going to sit sit out. Uh, but also, you know, if you want to token selection, it'd be the Fab again, Random Harvest. Okay, Random Harvest eleven or four then for the the Valiant Stakes. Uh, what I would say against the favourite though a little bit, uh, Tom, is just uh, how well the Irish fillies and mares have been doing when coming over this uh, this year. Of course, um, uh, Zenga, for example, was beaten by. Gavin Cromwell Raider at Pontefract last time out. Of course, we had Villanova Queen and we had uh, at Tahir, of course, at, uh, at Royal Ascot as well. And there are a couple of fascinating Irish Raiders here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Caddo Bell is the most obvious one with the money. She finished really strongly, didn't she, when she won the other day? Thornbrook, she'll like the ground. I thought, uh, as much as I like Random Harvest, she's had plenty of racing the last few weeks. Now, I'm not really one that worries too much about it but she's five to two isn't she or she's quite a short price and uh, i thought roman mist was going to run well uh for archie watson and O'Sheen murphy i just thought she ran really well in the kensington palace she had top weight that day and she was drawn on the outside and she was one of those ones that went really hard early to get a position she was still in front of her, well she, she, she chased the pace she led early and then got overtaken and she hit the front again with a with a furlong to go and she's only been two and a half length she was top weight that day don't think she'll mind any giving the ground. 
Uh, I'm going to say it quietly because as soon as you say things like this, it doesn't happen. But I thought she's definite to get the lead. Didn't see too much pace in there. I thought I thought she'd get the lead, and it might she might be hard to peg back on the, on the conditions she likes. Uh, so I thought while Random Harvest is the obvious one, and Caddo Bow Bell has the potential. I did wonder whether the race might just go Roman Wiss way, and at a decent price, she'd be my selection. Okay, Roman Miss then, a, a seven to one shot for, for Archie Watson, whose horses have been cracking Nick and Oshin Murphy uh, in the saddle. But Random Harvest uh, is the 11 to four favorite uh, here. Simon, uh, any interesting angles, offers, extra places? What have you got for the third race on the card? Yeah, I mean, look, look Tom's, Tom's impact on market, seen Roman Miss now down to about seven to one. We were nine to one, but that blew across the, uh, the um, route sites. Caddo Bell and Amina have both been well backed and Random Harvest looked on the drift. Um, Amina is an in-the-know uh, price boost from Coral. Uh, we, we work, we're currently three to one. You can get a bit of seven to two in places, but we're going to go four to one. Uh, Amina, I think it's still half seven. We're holding this uh, for up to twenty pounds per person. So if you fancy a bit of four to one on that, was, hasn't she hasn't been seen out since for four hundred and fifty odd days? Clearly, the money the money that's come for suggests she's fit and well and ready to do the business. Uh, we're also offering a special on. An Irish trained horse to win the race. You've got two there running for you. You talked about uh, the form of the Irish Phillies. Matty peed up, Ross. Ever uh, Thornbrook and Caddo Bell uh, combined is two to one from seven to four. Uh, if you think one of those two is going to win the race, uh, it looks very trappy. I'd probably side with Caddo Bell as well, the Johnny Mercer runner, uh, two from two, and uh, very well exposed. And there seems to be a bit of market confidence behind that. Okay, Caddo Bell then. Yeah, seven to two shot, trained by Johnny Mercer and uh, um, ridden by Jamie Spencer. Two jockeys, I think, have probably got plenty in common in terms of their riding styles, that's for sure. Random Harvest, 11 to 4, though, at the Valiant Stakes, like you said, you, you're not sure about this one because the, you agree with the market. Yeah, basically, I just don't write. There's nothing, nothing that excites me enough to, to say, oh, I really want to back that. So, uh, but, you know, if you push for a selection, it'd be the fab Random Harvest. OK, and Tom? So, well, I'm hoping Roman Miss can get sort of off and front on her own, and uh, if so, I think she might be hard to take back, so I think she'll run well at a decent price. OK, Roman Miss then is a 7-1 to one shot uh, for the, uh, the Valley. Let's see uh, what we've got on the chat. Uh, if uh, Roman Miss will love the ground, says, uh, says Tom. Leech off world, everyone likes Caddo Bell. Another Greek group three, too many of them, uh, says Steve is 99. And Rob Dixon says Amina is pretty short, but it's probably better than these. And Varian get some fit. So plenty of opinions there uh, in the Valiant Stakes at Ascot tomorrow. Uh, now we're uh, uh, up to the uh, 3 o'clock, the International Stakes, uh, one of uh, many seven furlong handicaps throughout the season uh, at uh, Ascot, of course, uh, and uh, plenty of uh, Ascot specialists. Uh, but uh, I guess you could say that about Biggles. One of the uh, rare horses we're saying about Random Harvest doesn't like Newmarket, runs a blinder at Ascot. Biggles uh, runs a blinder at Ascot and then a blinder at Newmarket. It doesn't seem to matter what track you, uh, you run Biggles at. Uh, he is uh, having a cracking season. 9-2 to two to follow up that Bunbury Cup win. Fresh is 7-1. to one. Baradar, 15-2. to two. Vafatino is 9-1. to one. Bless him is 10-1. to one. Ramazan, 12s with Spangled Mac. Uh, Takarib Bay, 14s. Uh, again, plenty of other horses. Uh, Escobar. Uh, uh, has, uh, has done plenty of his favours in the past, I'm sure. Northern Express is in cracking Nick as well. Uh, Montesib is starting to become expensive to follow. Star of Orion, another uh, Beckett horse, has a, a little bit of a squeak. Uh, Safe Voyage, Popmaster, uh, a, another one trying uh, another crack at seven furlongs. So there's loads of uh, horses in with chances here, uh, Tom Siegel. Uh, but, again, I looked at Biggles. Uh, I thought he's got course form. I thought that Bunbury Cup performance was wildly impressive. Um, Yard are in good nick, Ryan Moore's in the saddle, three pound penalty. It's not that often I look at a big field handicap like this and think, yeah, absolutely fair enough, that horse should be a comfortable favourite. Yeah, totally, totally agree. Uh, just, it's just Ascot, isn't it? It's just, I have, it's just so confusing where they're going to go, what they're going to do, what position you want to be in, where you want to be. Uh, I, just, I just find it, I mean, I did a race there like a couple of weeks ago, a five furlong race, where I was convinced they were all going to stay on the near side and they all went into the middle. I just have no idea with these Ascot races now, especially these sort of lesser ones from, from Royal Ascot, where, what they're going to do. I expect they'll all come up in the middle, so that'll suit Biggles because he's drawn on the far side. Uh, I don't, watching today's racing, I didn't see that being a problem. So yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. I think he should be favourite and I think he's probably about the right price. In fact, he might start a bit shorter than that because he was wildly impressive in the Bunbury Cup. I think that form is very solid. Obviously, he ran so well at the Royal Meeting. I think the ground suits him. And I just think he's on a, on a steep upward curve. I just think he's getting better. 
So Biggles, yes, uh, he, he's the right favourite. I think Faradar had a chance. Of course, you've got to give Fresh a chance. And Mafotino runs well here. Ramazan ran very well over a mile in the uh, Britannia, dropping back to seven last time. A big help for him. But at the end of the day, when or when, you, when you're confused and you don't know what you're doing at an Ascot race, who do you turn to? Uh, James Spencer. Bless mm-hmm. him. I just thought he was beating a short head. I know he's one of Keels' favourite. I don't know if Keels is on it. Oh, well, found a member of the fan club, mate. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I never back him when he wins. <laughs> <laughs> beat the short head in the race last year off the same mark. He ran a cracker in the Bunbury Cup last time behind Biggles. Got to the front and was got to the front way too soon. He's just got. He's just going to run well, isn't he? If, if he, he'll need a strong pace for them all to fall back in his face, but I don't know. It might happen. It might not. But uh, you know what you're going to get with bless him. You know what you're going to get with Jamie Spencer. You know what. You know he likes Ascot. So I thought the disparity in price between him and Fresh from last year was was a bit ridiculous. I think they're much closer now than they were. I do think Biggles is the one to beat. But I would, I, I'm going to take him on with bless him, and I also think that Ramazan has a chance as well for the three-year-olds. Yeah, I mean, it's funny about Bless him, isn't it? Because over the years, he's 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 kind of been pegged as a as a proper mile horse, as big mile handicaps. But you actually take his seven furlong form, uh, given, you know, given how he's ridden, it's a it's a Jamie Spencer over the mile coming late uh, kind of job normally. But his seven furlong form over the last sort of uh, eighteen months is absolutely fantastic. You know, fourth last time out, you go back in time, fourth, second, first, uh, first. Uh, and then you have to go all the way back to Chelmsford back in 2021 to find him out of the uh, the frame. So, yeah, he's uh, he's got an absolutely cracking chance. He's well, also well, potentially well, he didn't he? Well, sorry, he won the Bunbury last year yeah. in the office. The yeah, but I, but I think for yeah for plenty for quite a few years they were consistently running him over a, a mile, weren't they? But absolutely. Well, he won the Britannia, didn't he, in his youth as a, yeah. as a three. So I presume people pegged him as that. But I just thought seven furlongs Ascot. He's just going to run well. He might, he might, he might find a Ramazan or a Biggles, you know, improve, progressing past him. But I thought he was about 14, 16 to 1 earlier, and that was, that was perfect there. Yeah, he's also potentially part of the uh, the tricast that we all want, which is bless him, Escobar and Orban, isn't it? I think that's <laughs> with Fresh thrown in there. It'd be as great, well. it'd be great, wouldn't it? Yeah, the most yeah, painful no, right. tricast. I, I, I love Fresh him. If they get the heavy showers, they'll be, they won't be in his favour because he's a. You know, he gets away with good at soft ground. He doesn't really like it. He certainly doesn't like it any worse than that. Uh, and, but, um, yeah, I mean, David Simcock said to me one day, you know, he'd, he'd go on an airport one way. Like, you know, I mean, he wants it rock hard if they can have it, and the faster the better. So um, we just have to wait and see what the weather does. And that's what, what, I'm, what I'm waiting to do with Baradar. I put two up earlier in the week, Baradar being one of them, Ramazan being the other. Uh, now, on his final start last year, on one pound worse terms than he's on now with Biggles. He absolutely thrashed Biggles at Doncaster. Uh, he won very, very easily. He, he came out, ran in the Lincoln, bottomless ground, traded at fives on, uh, didn't, uh, didn't last home. Uh, he then gave him one of the daftest rides you'll ever see in the Victoria Cup when he went from one side of the track to the other in the first 50 yards and then back out to the middle uh, at halfway to, to try and get a run and finish six. That was on soft ground. It was great. Ignore that run in the uh, in the Buckingham Palace because it was on fast ground. He's just a proper mudlark, but it does depend because it's been very warm today yeah. and dry, and we know how quick it dries. And if it's, you know, they called they could ended up calling it good to soft on the straight course today. If there's no, don't get any rain, it won't be far off good. Uh, and then he'll take a walk in the market. If it hammers down, he's a monster player. Uh, you know, in fact, I, I'd really fancy him. So we have to wait and see there. Um, Ramazan doesn't really matter. Um, ground-wise, does it? Because he's coming here off a career rest at, at Haydock, uh, having won last time. He didn't quite stay over a mile uh, uh, in the Britannia, but was third on his side. Last year's form on soft ground, he ran in that massive sales race and he finished third to Galleron uh, with, uh, remind me who was there. I mean, Oviedo was in 10th, he's rated 100 and something. Uh, but in uh, in, in um, Galleron's rated 109, we've got Magical Sunset in there, who was fourth, New Endeavour. Uh, who almost won the Britannia was fifth. Um, Killybegs Warrior, another horse that's, that, that's done well. It, it's just a really, really good race. And he's sitting here, you know, still in a still in a mark in the hundreds. Obviously, getting the weight for age. Now, three-year-olds haven't won this for a long while. Don't know whether they actually have. Uh, I couldn't tell you. Can you tell us? I'll tell you. You keep talking. I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, but but uh, in the last, I think from 2015 to 2021, they had three seconds of fourth, two fifths. 
um, from like ten percent of the runners or something. So two thousand and three. Go He's on. the only three-year-old winner, new seeker for Clive new Cox. New seeker for Clive Cox, there you go. So anyway, I think he's, I just think he's a three-year-old on the up. Uh, and if the ground does stay on the soft side, I have back one at a massive price. And that is another one. So John Tom mentioned the trainer earlier this uh, show. Uh, rhythm master for James Horton. Massive in and out horse, and tailed off in the Britannia and in the Buckingham Palace. He was a group horse a couple of years ago, uh, wasn't he? Yeah, oh, he, was, he was third. He was third to Campanelle yeah. uh, uh, in the pre-morning, was it? Something yeah. like that. Uh, he was also fourth to Creative Force in the Jersey on soft ground. Um, he's been in and out since, but you know, if you look at his RPRs, his last, his best RPRs ever have been in the last thirteen months, um, both on the all weather. But they prove that he's still got that ability. Uh, and obviously he's going back to softish ground at Asker, and he was 66 to one this morning. And I just thought it's one of those. If he puts his best foot forward, he isn't a 66 to one shot. If he runs like he is last time, he's a thousand to one shot. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> well, um, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that one goes then. That's for sure. Uh, but Biggles heading the betting here at, uh, at nine to two. I did think Northern Express was a little bit uh, underrated as well. He just never. He never seems to win a bad race. He, uh, when he no, wins, I he... think he's, he, yeah, he, he's in my dislike book because I think he's chinned a couple of horses I've backed this season. Mm. So. Yeah, he's a funny one. He, he, when he wins, he doesn't look like he wants to win. Mm. And when he gets beat, he looks like he's coming to win. So he is a bit of a funny one. But because of that, he ends up uh, being competitive all of these, uh, in all these big handicaps. But uh, yeah, Biggles though, 9-2. to two. Yeah, I, I was looking at this. I, I was considering, Simon, the, the dullest uh, each-way tricksy of all time tomorrow with Biggles or Gus Rodan. And Latam, three big races. I looked at him and I thought, you know what? I'm, I always try and get favourites beat. I always try and get a beat, and I, th I thought they were all pretty solid. So uh, yeah. we'll, we'll see if that comes up. But yeah, he's ninety-two, but plenty of plenty of old favourites in here. Oh yeah, fantastic! Just been enjoyable since you talked through the race. Not mentioning so many of the of the familiar names. Biggles is very solid at the head of the market. I say with Ryan Moore on board. Yeah, you know, fresh off that win, and um, fresh drifting, even though it's off the same mark as last year's win. And not much confidence in him. And money for bless him. That would be the seagull impact. Uh, Escobar, the old favourite. He's been quite well back deep way with Frankie Dettori booked for David O'Meara. And Jim Crowley, our Coral Ambassador, booked for Orban. And just, I think, you know, it's, he, 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 you can see what you can see on the page what Orban's all about. He's pretty more experienced than he is. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's looking forward to riding with all the form he's got over the years in these big field handicaps. And he has got form, a uh, decent, decent enough form on which cut in the ground. So you never know. He could uh, pop up at a big price. We've got um, like six places rather than the usual four, uh, as is the way these days on these big handicaps. And we have an in the nose special. If you want to just boil this down to. <laughs> yes, ooh, drum roll. Um, if you want to boil this down to two trainers who've got uh, some good chance in this uh, Rafe Beckett and George Bowie. In the, in the week the Racing League started, we're creating another little team, the Beckett Bowie team. Uh, you get two to one. One of those trainers wins this race with Biggles. Star of Orion running for Ray Beckett and Baradar and Spangle Mac for George Bowie. So I think combined that two to one is better than if you back them all individually. So uh, that's the in the no special. Uh, but you know, cracking race. Uh, I'd probably chuck a few quid at all band out of Blound with my loyalty for uh, Jim Crowley. I too like Bless Him. I always enjoy, I would always enjoy backing James Spencer on the uh, Aspen Great Course. They're probably the two that would do for me. Okay, there you go. Uh, plenty of opinions. Uh, that's just about every horse in the race tip, says Duncan Evans, which is, uh, <laughs> which is fair enough. But it is that sort of race, isn't it? It is that sort of race. And especially because there's so many of these types of races over the, uh, the course of the season, you, you can make a case for a horse, like you said, for the Lincoln back uh, at, the, at the start of the year, uh, and then make a case for a different one each, each time one of these big handicaps comes up. And by the time you, uh, you get to the Cambridge or something at the end, you've, uh, you've fancied every single horse that's winning any top class handicap all season. So uh, it can be quite hard to switch off the head versus heart, can't it, Keels? Ah, uh, yes, yeah, it's impossible. <laughs> yeah, yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but uh, tomorrow's international goes to. Uh, I take a chance of three-year-old Ramazan. If, if, if they do get a lot of rain, then Baradar's the one to beat in my head. Okay, there you go. Uh, I'm playing it safe with Biggles. Uh, what about you, Tom? Mm. Yeah, I, I, well, I will definitely have a few quid on Biggles. I'd back less him at a big price, but uh, it's, it's just a fight for these Ascot handicaps. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. OK, right. Uh, let's move on then to the feature uh, of uh, tomorrow's uh, car, possibly the feature of the season. We, uh, we don't necessarily know 
uh, as of yet, but it does have the potential to be an absolute crackerjack. Uh, Augusto Rodin is three to one favourite though for the uh, the King George shirt tomorrow. Four to one Hookham uh, and King of Steel. Emily Upjohn is nine to two. Pile Driver thirteen to two. Westover eleven to one. Uh, Luxembourg is twelve to one. Dover Legend uh, is twenty eight to one. Uh, Hamish the uh, the horse that or uh, ruined Tom's uh, entire year if it wins is uh, is in there as well. Point Lonsdale, who's a, a proper soft ground horse, uh, and Bolshoi uh, Ballet, who of course uh, was a proper a talking horse a couple of seasons ago, but is pretty much the rank outsider in this uh, race. And that tells you uh, how strong it is. Uh, and of course, we've got the the battles of the the generations. So we've got the the battles of the uh, the sexes uh, 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 kills as well. We've got the likes of of Hockham, who it feels like it's been a long time coming since he was given a real proper chance in a race like this. You've got Westover who's got to make up for last year. You've got Pile Driver who's consistently overpriced as well. Uh, yeah, the first what? If any of the, those first six in the betting won, you wouldn't be entirely disappointed, would you? Mm, wouldn't be at all, uh, at all surprised, no. Uh, Pile Driver's officially the best horse of the race. Uh, one, two, four. Just one pound above August Road in, but there's only five pound, I think, between the top six or seven on official ratings, less than that, according to Racing Post ratings. It just tells you it's a very, very tight race. Now, obviously, we've got two three-year-olds out or near the head of the market because they're the ones who've had less, less runs and, uh, and are more liable to improve. But oh, Gus Rodin was very workmanlike last time, wasn't he, against beating a stable mate who was, shall we say, tenderly handled in second <laughs> in, in, in Adelaide River. So um, he didn't look a superstar. Like, you know, he might not need to be to win this, but he might need to be. It'll, be, it'll need to be better than he yeah. was there. I would just say the, the, only, the only thing I get is that every single time a horse like this runs in, in, in a race, and you know, someone will say that's that's a superstar, and mm. then you know, after Newmarket, he's, he's mm. rubbish. He can't possibly win. Wins the Derby, that's a superstar. Yeah. Crawls, yeah. crawls in at the, the Curra. Wow, yeah. we've overrated him. So yeah, absolutely. Every time a horse absolutely, at this stage yeah. runs, because we don't know enough about him yet, everyone swings from one. Yeah, no, we don't. But I mean, he's running against. I mean, it, it, you know, what we've seen, what we've seen from horses so far from the Derby is we've seen we've we've said all oh, this looks like really good Derby form, but all we've seen is three year olds beating three year olds. Yeah, uh, you know, and now they're going up against you know what is the current cream of the crop. You know, I mean, uh, although they're not brilliant, they're not. You know, not bad by any stretch of your imagination, and and you've got some Ascot horses here as well, haven't you? That's the other thing, because who comes an Ascot horse? Yeah, uh, he, he he loves it. He's won a couple of group races there, uh, and uh, Pile Driver obviously absolutely loves it. Yeah, um, Hamish, he's Ascot horse. <laughs> <laughs> Hamish loves it. I mean, Pile Driver's. You know, I mean, Tom, Tom will I'm no doubt be singing his praises soon, whether he tips him or not, but. You know, he was great. I mean, they have been off for ages, isn't he? And he tugged his way all the way around and still won easily. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So he is a very good horse. I don't think he'd want it very soft. I know he's, he's got he's got form with cutting the ground, but I think he'd prefer it faster. And I come down just looking at them. I mean, I backed Westover. He was a bigger part. He was a, he was a fair bit bigger than that um, the other day. Um, simply because he went off 13 8 last year. Yeah. And he boiled over before, and they, he was, they, he was, he was too keen. A shocking ride, wasn't he? He got an awful ride. He went off way, way, way too fast, mm. and uh, was never going to get home. But since then, and especially this year, he just looked, you know, he's definitely at least as good as he was last year, possibly better. Second in a really good uh, Group One at Maida, finished ahead of Mostadaf, uh, who won the Prince of Wales. Uh, second to Emily Opjohn, went, went outspeeded off a steady-ish gallop at in the coronation and then one you know okay it was a straightforward pretty weak group one last time but he comes in here in very good form doesn't he uh, you know and you know i don't think he's that far off him he's also drawn on the outside yep which two reasons you like one we've seen at royal ascot how often it is at a mile and a half that a high draw uh seems to be an advantage and the other point is that the two ballador pacemakers in the race are drawn low uh and I they mean, are you want to be slingshot they as are as going possible, to be falling back through the field at some yep. point aren't they uh, you know so I'll be saying to Rob Hornby, don't tuck him in. Don't, for God's sake, tuck him in. Yeah. Well, I mean, stay, even, even in, even in last year's race, I mean, it didn't yeah. look like there was that much pace. And obviously, they went off mm. incredibly quick. And yeah. uh, Pile Driver and Torquedo Tasso came yeah. wide around the outside. And that was yeah. a small field yeah. where you weren't sure about the pace. So this is exactly, surely yeah. going to be. Yeah, exactly. That so that's what, that's what I would say. I'd say, you know, stick to your outside. They're going to they're gonna fall back in your lap on the inside anyway. Yeah. Uh, and he might be, you know, and he does stay very, very well as well. And that's yeah. the other thing. If it is, if it is sticky out there, you're going to need to get home. Okay. 
Uh, there you go then. Uh, West Ham is currently an 11 to 1 shot here, but uh, of course, uh, Pile Driver is uh, very much one of your uh, favourite horses uh, in training of all time, Tom, uh, perhaps. Uh, he's a 13 to 2 shot. Uh, again, he's <laughs> his fifth favourite. He's fifth favourite in the in this race. He's, he's all it's it's I don't know. I mean, ironically given his name, he's he's never popular in the ring, is he? But he's uh, he's 13 to 2 uh, here, but um, the one thing again, I did say when when I when the the derby was won by August Rodin, I watched the replay back several times. I did the speed figure, and I said this is a very, very, very good race this year. So I do think the three-year-olds are very good. But like I said, it's a it's a cracker. Where did you come down? Uh, well, I'm hoping Pile Driver wins uh, because just for all the real reasons we've been through a million times before. Slightly concerned. Uh, I'm, I mean, I don't, the ground will be a massive issue for these, these big, strong older horses. I don't think it will be that bad tomorrow. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm more worried about the fact that he had a hard race. He must have had a hard race after a long layoff because they ran a very good time and he pulled hard. So I know the trainer's not concerned about it, but I am. I'm worried that he'll bounce on the back of that, which is my worry for him. I totally get what Keel said about Westover because I think he's a, a really strong stayer. I think they're thinking of running him in the cup races next year and races like that. So I think if they go really hard, that will suit him. But it's still hard to get away from the way Enemy Upjohn sort of brushed him aside like he was standing still. I know that was solely run, and I know this might be very different if they go very hard, and it might suit him more. But Emily Upjohn looked different class to him uh, at, at, at Epsom, which would make me think that she might be the one to beat. But I like King of Steel. I have always liked King of Steel after the Epsom run. I just thought that was an amazingly good effort, the way he travelled there. I know... Kevin Stock said he was kicking himself, and I, I, I sort of half agreed with him. It wasn't the fact that he could have done anything different. The fact that he hit the front a long way out, Epsom, and left his chin out for all Gus Rodan to come and beat him. I think he showed at uh, Ascot uh, what a good turn of foot he has. I think he'll be held up for later. I don't think the ground will be an issue for him. And if you are a very good three-year-old, you should win these races. Mm. You know, if you're a derby class... You know, if you win the derby, you should really be winning beating these older horses because, as Hills rightly pointed out, they're good, but they're not outstanding. They're not Swain. They're not Phil Sudsky. They're not, you know, all those ones from the past. Well, and also, you know, like you said, I mean, Tom, you've got you've got an Oaks runner-up. You've got a Derby runner-up. The the horses that beat Emily Upjohn and the horses that that beat Westover aren't here. So you you haven't got the defending champions from last year's races, have you? You've got the the second yes, year. I think you're harsh on Emily Upton because she's no, clearly. No, I, I, I know, I know, I, I know. Like you, you can argue with that, but what I mean is, in terms of you know, it's not. Yes. They, yes. They're not bringing the. Yes. The crown are, to the table. They are very, very good. They're the best around, aren't they? Hmm. Upton and uh, Emily Up, John Pyle Driver and West Over and Luxembourg. But they're not setting a bar that is unreachable. And if you've got a very good three-year-old, which I think, like you, August Rodan and King of Steel, have the potential be mm. i think they should be beating those type of horses i really do get in the way uh because on what they showed at epson they are very good they left the, left the, the, other, the rest of the field a mile behind now i know it's in and out we don't really know the form of the derby yet but you know i'm a, I'm a traditionalist i go back through the years and a, a good derby winner or a, you know most derby winners come on a win and they beat miles better horses than the ones that are running here you know they beat proper group one horses, you know, that have been winning group ones throughout their careers. So I'm with the three-year-olds. I like King of Steel marginally overall, Gus Rodan, but I am worried about stall three. I am, but as Keel's pointed out, he's got the, the uh, he's got the uh, Ballydor pacemakers all around him. It's going to be a tough job to get him start. I'm hoping it sort of drops him out and around the outside, but not a massive field, but that does worry me, a traffic pop for him, but he was my fancy a few weeks ago and I'm not being put off him. Okay, the King of Steel is a four to one shot, and yeah, I did. I think I, I, I'm just gonna have to, like I said, the, the second leg of the the boring tricks here, Simon. But um, yeah, the three year olds, uh, King of Steel could turn the form around. August Rodin could improve again, and if you read him through Adelaide River, I guess it's a bit disappointing, but he beat Spruill and he beat White Birch even further than he did at Epsom, and uh, and Adelaide River's not exactly let the form down in France either. But um, like you said, Hookham's coming to the boil for uh, for the the Burrows and. And Crowley combination as well, a really cracking form at the moment. They've had uh, some really impressive winners over the past couple of days. Oh, definitely. And Jim, you know, Jim is really confident. You know, he, 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 um, 
He loved riding with Sandown, beating Desert Crown. He points out in his blog, you know, Pile Driver won the King George last year, but Hook was beating him. Pile Driver in the Coronation Cup, and it's only then he picks up the engine. And, we, and Jim says, we don't know what Hookham would have gone on and done. He loves getting his toe in, but he said he wouldn't want it heavy. So I think he's, he'll be very happy with how the ground's riding now. And his line is, he said, if they go a hard pace early, he's got stamina to live with them. If they go steady, he showed a Sandown here the pace to quicken. So he's bullish. Um, and I'm a, I, I, I'm a, I always tend to end up siding with the kind of proven older horse against the three-year-olds. And, you know, there, there's the people that are sort of seduced about what may be. I love to, to sort of deal with what, what, what is. And Emily Upjohn, you know, I think, you know, obviously I'm a fan of the Coral Eclipse. We sponsored the race. It was only a small field, but the duel between, I think, the top three-year-old around Paddington and Emily Upjohn was brilliant. And that was over 10 furlongs that played to Paddington strengths. Emily Upjohn was staying on really well at the end. This is her trip. And she should have won the Oaks. The only real throw out is, that, is when she ran this race last year. You've got to assume that was just the way she pulled and it wasn't her race. Uh, she's obviously won at the track since. Uh, and I think she's, I think that her form, that win at the College Cup, beating Westover, who then goes and that, you know, wins convincingly in France in the Grand Prix um, to Saint Cloud. I think she's a big prize at 92. You know, I'd rather back her with what she's proven and what you've seen her do than. than Back August Rodin, who, who I said was, was wasn't too hugely impressive in, in the Irish Derby last time, and King of Steel, who's drifting in the betting, and so that'd be the way I look at it. We have got an Indo special, and um, this is for August Rodin fans. If you think August Rodin is going to win and win well, it's seven to one August Rodin to win by over two lengths, and in in five of the last ten years of the King George, the winner has won by two lengths, or well over two lengths or more. So uh, it's it's a race which often is won in convincing fashion. Obviously, it doesn't necessarily mean it'll be won by August Rodin in a convincing fashion. So uh, that is something, something to bear in mind. But um, yes, yeah, so that's the end of no special. But I'm I'm very much in the uh, Emily Upjohn camp and backing the Coral Eclipse form to come to the fore tomorrow. Okay, well, I think the selections uh, are pretty much telling us how open this race is. Cause I'm pretty sure we're all going to go for a completely different horse here, uh, Keels. Exactly, yeah, I'll back Westover. Okay, uh, August Rodin for, uh, for me. Uh, Tom? Uh, just like to point out that I thought we were going to get through the whole me the whole of the show without <laughs> mentioning the clips, but we didn't. So well done, Simon. You've got the, the got it up again. Uh, I'm the king of stick. There you go. Yeah. Well, I mean, contractually obliged and all that. Oh, he, uh, I mean, he, he manages to mention it during the w Welsh National, doesn't he? So I mean, yeah. he certainly do it for King George. <laughs> that is true. I mean, just just do, I, I want to know what Scudamore and Tizard fancy for this. That's what I want to know. Simon, but, uh, <laughs> And Chris Hughes, yeah. And Chris Hughes, of course, as well, yeah, yeah. What's, what's Annie Mack back in? Uh, but anyway, uh, tell us about, uh, tell us about the, your selection, Simon, and the King George. Yeah, Emily Upjohn. And what I would say, though, as for the Coral Eclipse and King George, this is what it's all about. This, this, this is the midsummer group ones, which should be about the, hmm. you know, the clash of the generations. And that's what we've got tomorrow. We'll find out a lot tomorrow about uh, how this three-year-old pop stands up against the top older horse. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, I was just going to say for a second. I thought we, the only thing we are missing is a five-year-old, but we've got Bolshoi Ballet. We've literally got three, four, five, six, seven-year-olds. We've got pretty much every generation you can imagine coming, <laughs> uh, going head-to-head -head in the King George tomorrow. Right, let's absolutely rattle through the last three at Ascot, Ooh. shall we? Uh, the Pat Edery Stakes listed race for uh, the two-year-olds over seven furlongs here. Uh, Ancient Wisdom is seven to four favourites. Sunway seven to two. Uh, Ali Narby four to one. Uh, Rosalian is six to one. Al Musmak is sevens. How's the Governor is fourteens and eighteen to one and bigger the rest. Uh, again, oh, my, uh, myself and the other two people who read your email, Tom, uh, saw you uh, talking about that How's the Governor race earlier in the uh, the week. Uh, is he your idea of the winner or do you fancy another one in this? Two? Two? You're overestimating yourself, Ross. <laughs> you and me. Oh, that is two. And now I, 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 make, I make my girlfriend read it as well just to make, so I can say, look, just to get the numbers up. Yeah, big fan of big fan of how's the governor. Don't think he'll win this though. Uh, I thought Sunway was massively impressive at stand down. I uh, thought he he's the one to beat. And also, if you read next week's one, you'll know I'm a huge fan of Too Darn Hot as a stallion. And another winner by ten lengths today at Thirst. He they are flying. And I think as soon as we get these races over seven furlongs, he'll he'll smash away all those sprint stallions. Al Yanabi is by Too Darn Hot. I think Sunway might beat him tomorrow, but Al Yanabi is definitely a horse to follow. So. That would be my two against the field, although obviously the Godolphin horse is very short price for me. Okay. Uh, Keels? Uh, yeah, very much with Tom on Sunway. Um, as one of those horses, two furlongs out, 
he's finishing fifth at, Sa at, at Sandown, isn't he? And he's ended up winning three and a half lengths. He's really flown inside the final phone. You had to be impressed. Uh, Rosa Lyons, the other interesting one of Richard Hannon's. Beat 40 to one shot first time out. Uh, but that one's in the field as well, having won next time out. Big Bertie Bassett. Uh, and it's just Hannon was very complimentary about him afterwards. Uh, and so um, he might be quite interesting as well. I think Ancient Wisdom has the best form, but he's had two runs, and these ones have had one, and I think there could be there could be quite a few decent horses in this race. Yeah, yeah, yeah it looks like it, doesn't it? Uh, OK, uh, all on Sunway then. Uh, like I said, we've got five minutes, so uh, Simon, uh, short and snappy. Very quickly, Charlie Apple, he's won this three of the last four years, and in the other, he had the third, so hence Ancient Wisdom, understandably, is heading the market. But Jim Crowley's very bullish about a big run from Ali and Narby. Uh, he wasn't a surprise winner on debut at Salisbury. I've ridden him in his homework. He's taken a big step forward from his first run, and the step up to seven will suit him. Any given the ground will be in his favour. I'm expecting a big run for a young horse I really like. That's all I need to say. Four to one. There you go. Four to one, Ali and Arby. And like you said, yeah, the, uh, the horse that Charlie Appleby got beat was uh, Naval Crown, who, of course, went on to win. Uh, in Group 1 Company at Royal Ascot. So it uh, could be a good race. Uh, the uh, the 4.50 penultimate race on the card tomorrow, a mile handicap here, and Latam heading the betting uh, for the, the Haggis and Moore combination at 15 to 8. Garley, 7 to 2. Uh, Aku and Najla is 11 to 2. Loughton is 6 to 1. Stormcatcher, 10s uh, and 12 to 1. And uh, bigger the rest than uh, Keel's for this uh, mile handicap. And uh, Latam just keeps going from strength to strength. Just, the just only horse that's beat him is Jimi Hendrix. Exactly. Just very solid. He won an Irish Lincoln, second to Jimi Hendrix in the, was it the Spring Mile at Newbury? Jimi Hendrix came out, won the Hunt Cup, uh, then won a, a very good race at Newcastle. I quite often see plenty of Newcastle form come into play uh, at Royal Ascot on the straight track as well. Um, so it's just, just everything in his favour. He likes the ground, he stays a mile really well. Hard to beat. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't even think the, the race was particularly run to suit last time at Newcastle, and he still managed to, uh, to win. So, yeah, I like, the, uh, I like the look of him. But again, he's another 15 to 8 favourite in what could be an open race. Tom, what about you? Yeah, just different track for him, isn't he? I know Keel says Newcastle's stiff as well, like Ascot, but it's just, I think it sort, it's all sort of suits quick tip twitch horses. He looks like a bit of a lummox to me, Latam. Uh, he'll want very, very soft ground. Mm. If it's very soft, I think he will. And if not, I think he'll get beat. I like Lowton a bit. Down the bottom for, for Edward Bessel. Uh, just an improving three-year-old. Love any given the ground. Plenty more improvement. You know, I thought he might he might be the might be the fly in the ointment. Okay, uh, Lowton then uh, six to one shot stepping up in trip, but uh, right. stayed really strongly last time out. Um, admittedly at Newcastle. So yeah, Newcastle form coming to the fore. Uh, Simon. I mean, yeah, last time really well backed. I think it was chalked up at around four to one last night. Half in price, fifteen to eight, really well backed. Uh, Garley also quite well backed. He was a six to one uh, in paces early on, down to seven to two. Disappointed about last last time, back to last time, but obviously expected to uh, improve on that. But just the other one, very interesting. Booking a Frankie de for Simon Pierce for Stormcatcher. That was twenty odd to one last night, half in price. Um, you know, quite an exposed horse, but just the fact that he's running on this track, this ground. With Frankie Dottori on board, and the money's come from. I thought he might be worth it this way. Yeah, he'll be by long tradition, didn't he? Who um, ran a blinder in the John Smith's Cup, and the horse just behind, one step beyond, absolutely uh, dotted up at, uh, at Ascot next time out as uh, as well. So, uh, last race on the the King George card is the 5.25, uh, five furlong get handicap, uh, where the big board is going for the hat trick. Uh, in fact, going for uh, four wins out of five this season. Uh, 9 to 2, Riverman Hoove significantly is 11 to 2. Kunan uh, is 7 to 1. Bond Chairman 8. Existent is 10 to 1. Dusky Lord 11 to 1. Call Me Ginger is 11 to 1. Uh, another informed horse is Isle of Lismore, so that got. Uh, uh, a, a good record this year as well. Uh, Rock Melody for Jim Goldie's horses are going very well indeed. But of course, uh, who who should we go to for a big sprint handicap with only 30 seconds on the clock? <laughs> it is, of course, the one and only Mr. Tom Siegel. Take it away. Uh, the stopwatch starts now. Uh, Julie Camacho, Shaquille, move significantly his move there. Very impressive at Haydock. Two wins at Ascot. He'll do for me. OK, there you go. Significantly it is. 11 to 2. Uh, yeah, he's on. The, he's definitely on my list as well. In fact, top of it, um, I will have a couple of quid also on old mate of mine, Arecibo, who's already dropped four pounds since finishing third to Dream Composer at uh, Sandown. He's got some Ascot form. He's in and out as he, as he was last time he was out. But uh, if he's in, twenty-eight to one's a big price. Okay, uh, and okay, it's another one though. I didn't really want to take on the favourite. I mean, just absolutely dotted up here last time out. 
Uh, the only time she got beat was um, she was actually second on the far side um, to the horse I backed, Harry Brown. Yeah. So I was devastated that he didn't even make the frame behind her like, next time. Like, you know, but that's the way it goes. She's obviously uh, uh, improving. Yeah, and um, that, again, that Newbury form and softish ground last year as well. I mean, she was running on fast, but it'll be by Quantum Impact, who's rated a, a stone higher. And behind them, you cow left, Bailey Gate, Battle Dubai, loads of uh, winners will come out of that as well. So uh, maybe I won't be playing the play spot tomorrow, Simon, because um, if all the results go the way I think they're going to, um, it turns out I've, I've suddenly turned into a favourite backer, but who knew? Um, <laughs> closes out with the 525. Yeah, no, I like the big board. I think she's, uh, she's on a roll, very impressive last time. She Solid four to one chance. We're paying four places, not three, in this set race. Well, only one favourite in the last ten years has won this race, so probably hope she drifts. But no, I'm, I'm a I'm a big the big board fan. Okay, there you go. Lovely stuff. Well, uh, hopefully you're not too uh, bored by the end of this uh, preview. Everyone watching at home, uh, just get some uh, tips out in those last three before we uh, before we wrap it up. Ancient wisdom is a shocking price. That's toothpick Charlie, star of Orion each way for Robert Stewart. Uh, and uh, uh, Mr. Mistopheles at a price, uh, Rob Dixon as well. So uh, there you go, plenty of opinions tomorrow, which uh, promises to be uh, an absolute uh, uh, fantastic day at Ascot's uh, and a uh, proper clash of the generations. Uh, but if you like top class racing, then maybe you'd want an all expenses paid trip to America. stuff right let's wrap up uh, our king george preview with the naps on saturday starting off with the man to my left mr paul keely uh yeah let's go uh, ask it anyway ramazan in yeah. the three o'clock ramazan it uh, is uh, tom uh the one in the last significantly i think that's got a very good chance okay significantly in the uh, in the, uh, the sprint handicap what about you mr claire in the uh, 415 the listed two-year-old race uh, jim's so confident on Alia Nabi. I'm going to go for Alia Nabi. Okay, there you go. And so it seems everyone else has napped in the other races. I half fancied one. Uh, let's be boring and go for Latam, shall we? For uh, for Haggis uh, and more. Uh, but uh, we'll be back for more as well because uh, due to a weird quirk of the calendar, Keels, it's the King George into Galway and Goodwood, of all things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, brilliant. Can't wait. Yeah, get those heavy ground yeah, pedigrees yeah. out. You may have to have the head in here, though, because I'm going to be at Goodwood all week. You are going to get through all week, yeah, yeah. Uh, but Tom said he'll be, he's going to come in, he's going to spend the entire week, we're going to go out for lunch, uh, we're yeah, going to see the right. sights, we might, we're going to get a tape, <laughs> we're going to get a tape modern together, aren't we, uh, Tom as well? <laughs> maybe go around, go around Soho, I thought we'd, uh, maybe Covent Garden as well, if you fancy it. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fair enough, okay. Uh, and, uh, and Simon, uh, you're on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am, I am. I'm in Florida, probably keeping an eye from afar. Lovely stuff. Uh, well, join us next week. Enjoy tomorrow. Good night.